Okay, everybody, this is the Tinderbox meetup for August 14th with Michael Becker. Hi, all. Uh, welcome to the August 14th Tinderbox meetup. Uh, typical uh, approach is we talk about what we need to do or what we're working on as projects. Um, and then uh, we dig into, um, oh, we also introduce new people, but we don't have any new people today. And, and then we dig into different concepts of Tinderbox. So I do have some prepared uh, thoughts and ideas to share with you all today. I actually have some questions for Mark. Maybe you can help me uh, figure out where am I, you know, re rooting out some of my complexity. Um, but other than that, let's just jump right in. So who's working on what and what questions, comments do you have this week? Anything? Dennis, what do you got going on right now in your mind? You're on mute. You're still on mute. All right, we lost him. Uh, anybody else have anything else going on? Or do we want to jump in and uh, kind of just go through some of the things that I was uh, thinking about sharing today? Dennis, are you back uh, on? Dennis, there he is. I'm working on a couple of projects for indexing book collections. Okay, and any any questions you have about those or anything we can uh, no, help you explain? So. Are, are right. these contemporary book collections, meaning that they have barcodes or are these antique book collections which don't even have ISBNs? Uh, some of them don't even have Library of Congress numbers. Uh, I'm from Minnesota and so uh, Sinclair Lewis is one of my favorite authors and I have a collection of his books that are so old that I dread usually even opening them up. Um, and they don't even have Library of Congress numbers. So but, uh, there's probably less than 10% of books like that. Uh, more are, are from that era forward. Uh, a lot of them have ISBNs. Uh, a lot more recently uh, are Kindle books. Nice. Yeah, interesting problem. There was a cool product, still is a cool product, um, called something like Magical Library that used the iPhone for a barcode reader before you could use the icon, the iPhone automatically for a barcode reader. And uh, but 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 it thought out the problem very well for those people, all of whose books have barcodes. Right. I used a little device, they called it a mouse or a rat or something, mm -hmm. but it was only connectable to a serial port. Right. And that's long, long ago for Macintoshes. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay, what else do we have going on? I've been Why asked, it? sorry, go ahead, David. Um, I, since this, this topic does come up in discussions, the uh, a stepping stone per, uh, so uh, contacts for everybody else here, I pointed out to Michael that he has misspelled stepping stone on his homepage. <laughs> well, it turns out that stepping stone is uh, spelled with and without a space, one and two words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. So I, we were both right and we were both wrong. Exactly. Exactly. And it, it. and and I was hoping that one dictionary, the, 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 maybe there was a difference between the the American and the English dictionaries, but they all, both offer both. So <laughs> that's pretty good. It's <laughs> chaos. It's just another sign of the apocalypse. Now we can't cats even, and dog, cats and dogs living together. We can't even depend on four hundred years of of. Uh, uh, semantics. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any other comments or do we want to jump in and uh, have me go through some prepared thoughts? Who else is working on what? All right. So if no one else have any prepared thoughts, I thought we could um, revisit the uh, the discussion we were having last week about this idea of 
separating content from structure from design and go through that a little bit. And I thought the idea of understanding how to curate and generate bulleted lists would actually be of uh, an interesting idea um, to kind of go through. Um, so if you're all up for that, I will uh, go ahead and share that with you and then we can um, kind of kick in and see what else is um, what else might come out of that discussion. All right, and then if we have time after that, I can show you some of the other really wicked cool stuff I've been doing this, doing this week, but I think we can start with that. Make sense? All right, so let's jump in. So um, for the backdrop of this conversation, I've, I, I was hoping to have a more concise and developed demo, but I've got innovating while I, prior to the call and I started breaking stuff, I needed, uh, I needed to pull it backwards. So let me, uh, let's kind of go through it in this process. I wanna start with um, what we were talking about last week with, um, with uh, uh, Bill. Uh, when we were talking about, he was asking the question of how do we do bullets? Um, and really one of the key ideas that we were talking about, one of the keys, uh, and another idea we were talking about last week, I think was really important is this idea of the separation of what we'll call content. Um, before we get to the bullet idea, we'll do content structure and appearance. I called it design last week, excuse the typo. Um, and uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Mr. Pinkerton so dutifully came back and said, "I don't know what you mean by uh, by um, by design," and so therefore we we landed on the term appearance. So let me kind of do this. I'm going to look at Map View and walk you through this uh, this again this idea of what I've been thinking about as I've been looking at and thinking about Tinderbox and getting better at making all this work. We have this idea of our content, all right? And if I Trying to make it as pretty as I can. We've got content, and content is our, are our thoughts, our ideas, the way we go about producing our material. Uh, and the way we can use and, and manipulate and, uh, and manage content within Tinderbox is we can leverage these things called attributes. Attributes. And so, attributes is a, is a means and a method and a form for us controlling and managing content. And then we can also use these things called prototypes. That uh, you know that help facilitate our management management of content. Um, now, interestingly enough, agents can also be used for content, but we'll go we'll go back to that in a little bit. So we've got this concept called content. Then we have this other concept called structure. And um, in the parlance of uh, the um, the uh, you know kind of the uh, you know internet world and all that, one of the beautiful things about Tinderbox is it really relies on industry standards in terms of languages that we use to be able to produce and write our content. So if we're, for example, in here and, and we're writing content, we're gonna be looking at um, you know, text-based content, you know, such as a lorem ipsum kind of thing. If we wanna use images, we certainly can put those into Tinderbox, but as we know, that turns to, tends to bloat files and has other issues. And if you start using um a lot of images and you're producing content and such you know you want to really focus on your content being text-based and pulling uh, those images in uh in another way but that's not what we'll talk about today so then you have this idea called structure and the way the way we produce structure with tinderbox is we use you know a couple of languages we'll use either html um depending on your capabilities there and or we'll use css uh, you know cascading style sheets and C uh, css uh, is another methodology that we can use to get structure. So we'll go ahead and drop those in, and that's that's what we do with structure. And then finally, um, we have an area we'll call um, appearance. And appearance is your look and feel. It's the colors. It's the themes. It's the it's the it's the the padding that you put around things, uh, which and which also can be considered structure. But that's why we put CSS here as well. But when I'm talking about appearance here, I'm really talking about the colors and themes and all of that. So when we think about the nature of what Tinderbox allows us to do uh, is with this methodology, we can manage content, we can manage structure, and we can manage uh, appearance. And collectively, um, you know, as I've been kind of playing around with it, this, uh, these two boxes here collectively make design. So this is the way we design uh, design our pages, design the look and feel that we want to have with our with our information and how we work. And 
all together, this makes what we'll call the presentation or what I often will call as the contribution, right? So, um, and that presentation, you know, can be done in a variety of ways. It can be a Word file, it could be a PDF file, it could be a PowerPoint, it could be a podcast, it could be um, like, um, you know, what Dennis does when he gets up on in, in terms of an expert witness and he's on the stand and he's leveraging his content to give his presentations and support his elements. But these are kind of the three structures. And what we can do with Tinderbox then is separate content structure and appearance. Now, um, does any thoughts before we move on to kind of then demonstrating the, the, new, uh, the way this might apply itself in like the managing of bullets or lists uh, within a Tinderbox file? Does anybody have any thoughts, comments uh, on this framework or a way to uh, you know, refine it and make it better? I think one, uh, yes, I'm raising my hand. Um, this all sounds familiar and looks familiar. I think what it, 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 it doesn't capture in these three uh, elements is number one, the hypertext portion of it, the, the, the fact that your content does not necessarily have to follow a linear structure, that it can have dimensions other than a strictly linear narrative type style. And the other part is a big timeline. We don't, another aspect of structure, again, not related to hyperlinks per se, but not also not linked to strictly linear narrative is to uh, graphically display information and events that, or information that has a chronological element in a chronological format. So just two things uh, to, to so, consider includes. So I, I, I like those nuances and let me respond to them. So um, when we talk about the hypertexting and the linking together, that's part of content, that's part of attributes uh, and that and all of this can be enhanced by what we'll call action code and export code. And so where the, where the um, and, and I don't want to get too overly, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. I don't want to get overly too pedantic about it, but the idea that then all of these elements are, you know, happen within Tinderbox by leveraging um, action code agents. Um, some, you know, the elements of the Tinderbox toolbox, which includes action code agents and um, export code, and this gives us this ability to manage the hypertext context. Um, in terms of timeline, I would argue that the timeline happens in the content area where you have an attribute called start date, end date, um, or whatever date you want to, you know, uh, user generated date value you might create. And then from that, you can either use, if you're in the content curation part of the process, you would go up here and uh, leverage, um, you know, and we don't have any timelines right now, but you would leverage Tinderbox timelines to help you facilitate the curation of your content. So as a tool, Tinderbox will help you facilitate the, your, your, uh, the curation of your content. When you're looking to actually publish your content, get it into a presentation and present it, you could either take a screenshot of the Tinderbox timeline and put that in your document, or you could actually use the structure and appearance tools of HTML to dynamically produce that timeline for you into a table or a graph or pull, you know, using some other methodologies to pull in really pretty pictures. Um, so I would argue you're right. These are really great nuances to bring in, but I believe those nuances are um, you know, buried within this framework. Any other thoughts? Uh, yes, Mr. Bruce. Um, did you just say me? My dog is going crazy at the same time. I did problem. just say you. Thank you. Um, I just want to go back with Cody. Thank you. Jesus. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Dave, as you were asking questions about that, I'm kind of curious. Does your, does your um, kind of development process differ from this? And, and if so, I'd be curious how. Uh, I don't have a development process. Uh, what what brought go. this what brought this to mind uh, was uh, I've been reading a number of uh, books uh, about 
his, the, the development of the atomic bomb and FDR and his role in World War II. And obviously they focus on different things, but they occurred during the same era, during the same time frame. And in ebooks, which why we don't do this, there is no timeline view for an ebook. And I would love to be able to place uh, the events, significant events. I'd love to be able to dial in the granularity of two different books, uh, one on top of the other, so I can look at the proximity of events uh, in different books to one another. I, otherwise, I have to remember it in my head or make a note and, and go back and sort it by dates, uh, which is all doable. But I think that there's a tremendous amount of value in, in much of the literature that we are producing in terms of certainly history uh, to offer a timeline view of significant events. And, and you could break it up by geography or by you know, any number of other categories. Um, and I just, I just feel like it feels like something is completely missing. Um, Michael and Mark, correct me, but what Dave is describing to me almost sounds like that that's just a natural for somewhere between the timeline view and possibly the hyperbolic view. Well, yeah, and, and, and yeah, and that's what I meant where I was trying to say that. And if we have time today, Dave, we can demonstrate that for you. Um, so again, what I'm trying, what, so what I'm hearing you say is as a researcher, I want to be curating my content. So let me go back, uh, let me pop over here and, and um, uh, uh, play with that dialogue a little bit. So what I hear you saying is you're in the, uh, and I don't want to blow up my demo here. So what I hear you saying is, you know, as a researcher and within this kind of what I'll, I'm calling the five C's of knowledge management, you're playing in this kind of collection and curation stage right now. So you're reading a bunch of books. And as the process of reading that bunch of books, you're collecting notes. And as you're collecting those notes, you're curating those notes by, you know, hopefully you're, you're citing them to the book you found the concept or idea from. You're adding this, the date that event happened. You're possibly adding an attribute date of the geography of where that event happened. So all of that's happening happening in what I would call the content stage, which is right here, where you're actually developing and curating your, your thoughts and ideas. And when you actually get to and create new thoughts and ideas for yourself, you'll then actually produce, start producing new original content. That's your creation stage. So all of this is that realm of content. And that's, that is the realm of Tinderbox. That is what you do with Tinderbox is you collect and you curate and you create content and ideas. And then to your point of hypertext and linking, you use action code, you use attributes to be able to link those notes together, and we'll be able to demonstrate that in a bit. Um, but that, so I don't think we're, you know, I think you're, you're getting into a really important nuance um, into the next layer. So Bruce, you had uh, something else to say? I did not. I just forgot to lower my hand. Okay. Thanks, so uh, Mr. Bernstein, you had a comment, thoughts, ideas? Yeah, I'll... The, 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 these are good distinctions, but they uh, don't bear thinking out too deeply because they probably are intractable in detail. So this is a case where the big picture makes lots of sense, but trying to enforce it is really hard. Uh, one example is, agree. does CSS really fit in structure, which is certainly defensible, or in appearance. Its authors certainly meant for it to go into the appearance box, but I agree that that's maybe not where we end up. Uh, uh, another example, just in terms of how we write things. It, it's fairly clear that in the prehistory of all of this hypertext stuff that I've been thinking deep thoughts about recently, uh, there is an important strain of uh, an important tension. And a uh, fellow in England wrote an interesting paper positing that that tension was basically between uh, the French postmodernists and the Haight Ashbury hippies. And in the old days, we used to say it's between the American East Coast. Ted Nelson followers and the West Coast Engelbarters. And none of these are entirely satisfactory. I, I can make a lovely case that this is all a 
40 year fight of the followers of Sartre versus the followers of Levi Strauss. Uh, whether there's any point in it is a question, but how you choose to describe these two opposing camps uh, makes a big difference to the argument you're making, but that's a purely structural choice, or at least it can be expressed in terms that appear to be purely structural. Uh, so it's really hard to separate structure and content. I, and I, 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 yeah. I, I completely agree. I completely agree. So one of the other concepts that um, that I've been coming up with is because often when you're often when you're doing your writing, the structure itself will help you think. The structure gives you co uh, constraints and boundaries that move you along. Um, but one of the points that I'm going to demonstrate today um, in just a few minutes is Bill was talking about how he was you know, literally embedding structure into his content, which then when he wanted to repurpose that content. So another idea that, uh, that uh, that's coming up for me when I, when I think about this is this idea of um, repurposability. Um, So a key a key concept for me uh, when I'm doing this work is I I I absolutely abhor doing things multiple times. I want to do it once and I want to move on. When my wife gives me a shopping list, I I will plan my route so I don't need to come back to the house. Um, so for me, repurposing content or releveraging content is a really important concept in this process. So when you start embedding structure into the content, it it makes the repurpose, uh, you know, it adds friction to the repurpose, repurposability. Now, in that content, and this is where this idea of incremental formalization comes into play, um, uh, formalization, you know, in, in that, you know, you may need to embed structure into the content to get to that next layer, much like when you sca put scaffolding on a building to build a building, you've got to build the scaffolding to get up and down the building but later when you're done, you remove that structure. So there might be structure you need to put in your content to get you to the next layer, which will invariably you'll unwind uh, at some point. And that's perfectly fine. And that's part of the process. Um, so I agree, I agree there's nuances. And the other analogy I might put on this, um, you know, Mark refers to Ted uh, Libby Strauss, I believe is the name. He, I, I have never heard that one before. And Doug Engelbart, you know, this is also a lot like the arguments of Newtonian versus quantum physics. You know, within context, they're both right, but they also at the edges compete with each other and conflict with each other and make, uh, one makes the other wrong at the edges. Uh, and that's fine. You know, that, that's part of the knowledge management process that we're going through here. So um, with that in mind, if you guys want, if you don't mind, let me move on and I'll demonstrate, um, you know, the example of this uh, in, in the form of bullets. And so what I mean by that is um, and, and, and let me just kind of go back here and I'll reiterate this five C's of knowledge management. So often when I'll, I'll talk about this process called the five C's of knowledge management, you know, this idea is you collect your notes, you curate your notes, you create them. Ideally, much like we're doing today, we'll have collaboration, which will create new ideas. And then that leads to contribution, aka publishing. You get to publish your content and your notes out there. And that content can, and publishing can end up in any number of different forms. It could be a presentation, a linear Word document, an Excel file, et cetera. And this kind of brings me to the next point that I want to make um, when, we're, when we're working in what I you know, so lovingly uh, have been calling lately the puppy mill software. Part of why I really value Tinderbox is you know, when, when you're working in Word, Word forces you into this, this linear view of Excel. When you're working in, say, a, an Excel file, or I mean, a, a linear view of a Word document. When you're working in Excel, it forces you into this linear, this um, tabular way of thinking. When you're working in PowerPoint, it forces you into this bulleted image way of type of thinking. And that's not wrong per se, but the problem is when you're doing that work in, in output software, your, your work gets locked into this software and it's very, very hard to repurpose it, to pull it out, to use it in other places. And it's not that it can't be done, but it's an incredible, incredible manual exercise. Um, and so what you end up doing is you end up spending a lot of time at the end of your process, re repurposing and reformatting that content versus doing so in the middle. So I just think, you know, separating these, these ideas out make for a lot of, um, you know, long-term efficiency in the way you're going about creating your content. 
So let's get, let's take a look at this idea called bullets, and you know, and what do we mean by bullets? And I can actually list that. What I mean by bullets is lists, right? So what we want to do is we want to curate and manage lists. So let's think about how we go about doing that. Well, one way to manage lists is uh, uh, example one, right? Is we can come in here and um, let me go off of Bill's example left from last week. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a potato salad recipe um, out of uh, respect for Bill's initial proposal here. And I'm going to go find the ingredients for a potato salad recipe. And they bury them all the way down at the end. Come on, I should have thought about that. Here we go. All right. Be careful so about this. I, I, I'm from Ger I'm in Germany. So be careful about potato salad. He's one of our foundation recipes of German nationhood. <laughs> so, okay. sorry. So, so here's an example of a list. So I just I just went up to the uh, to the internet and I randomly grabbed this thing called potato salad. I don't know if it's a good one or not. I just pulled it up, <laughs> and I'm I'm now going to go ahead and paste that that list of ingredients in here. Now I've just I've just pasted the ingredient and. What happened, perfectly fine to do this. And what it's done is it's brought over all of the structure and all of the design that's in, been embedded within this page. And so if you look here and I highlight down, I, I, I click inspect on the window, what, uh, what uh, when, I hit, when I hit copy paste, all of this underlying code, the structure and design of what I've copied over is coming over from having the, uh, the, the, the browser and into my Tinder, Tinderbox document. And perfectly fine to do. Um, now, what this ends up doing, though, is this har it's hard to reproduce. It's hard to reuse. When I want to get this information out um, in other ways, um, that, can be, uh, that can be kind of a challenge. Um, so that's example one, you know, basically copy paste. OK, example two might be, um, you know, I'll take, that, I'll take that same content, but I don't want to bring in the design. So as we talked about last week, I'll hit con a shift control option command V and I'll paste in the content uh, without any formatting. Um, so I'm just getting the pure text. Uh, and so then what I might want to do is use the tinderbox ruler. Okay. And again, I, I'm, because I'm only sharing a portion of my screen, you can't see me do this. I go up to the format menu. I clicked, uh, no, excuse me. I go up to, yeah, go up to format menu. I click text and I need to, I'm uh, sorry. I need to hear, I need to be in here. I, you click in the text window. I go to the format menu. I click text. And then I, that, that will, if I'm clicking into the text window, when I do that, that opens up what's called the show ruler. And I get the, and I get the ruler that appears here. Now you can also turn the ruler on. It appears. I never use it. So I don't know the codes. Um, it's control. Command R. So, like, if you use Control Man Command R, you can turn on and off the ruler as well. So that's another um, thing to think about. That. And if I want bullets here, I can simply do that. Perfectly fine. Great to do. It's embedding structure into your document. If you look at the export code, you're actually getting clean, really clean HTML that's coming out of the export code of the document. And what the great thing about Tinderbox is it's actually smart enough, and there's an interesting thing. So somewhere in this code, I still have, see, we're getting some, so even then, even though I cleared out the code, I'm getting some interest. I got a, I, even though I cleared out the code with a copy paste, you'll see I got a block, a block quote that's still coming in from having copied that code. So I got structure into my document, even, even though I did a copy paste. Now, here's a beautiful thing with Tinderbox. If I hit Command A and then I hit Control Option Command T, that will remove any of the background. And the way to do that, if you go under Format Style, you'll see there's standard size, standard font options. Let me um, go and show that to you right here. If I go Format Style, you see I see standard size, standard font, and then when, it, when the ruler is right here. Okay. So when I do that, what that if you hit Command A, and then I uh, do the control option command um, command T. 
that Fort Tinderbox says, okay, I really know you want clean content. So I'm going to remove all of the background formatting. And you'll see here, the block quote should have gone away, which they, which they didn't. Let's do that again. Right. And this is where you just got it. Sometimes it's, it's really hard to get clean content. And as they say, garbage in, garbage out. So I can go about here and you see I'm still getting that block quote for some reason. So there's got to be some um, other kind of broken uh, you know, text in there. So what I'll, if that invariably happens to me, what I would do is get, get, get it a bit cleaner. And I'm still getting that block quote um, in there. Let's see. Now I'm going to go ahead here. Ah, I see. That's why I'm getting the block quote. Now I'm going to go like that. Now I get here. Now I've got super clean content. And now if I re-highlight this and use my list management view. And Mark, do you know why? That for some reason, this block quote keeps interjecting itself. I Is wonder why. That tab? No, I think it's something to do. It might be something with the, the, uh, the, rent, the, the HTML template rendering. There you go. Um, I think what we needed to do was I needed a space, All right? There you go, clean content. So it seems in the Tinderbox preview rendering, if I go back up there and now fix this, if I put a line break up here, Tinderbox is going to, yeah. So interesting. So, uh, so one, something I didn't know before, so if the list is starting on the very top, and Mark, Mr. Bernstein, this might be something we want to throw on the backstage. Uh, if the list is starting at the very top with no, with no um, uh, line break up here, that first bullet appears to get um, block quoted. But if there's a line break here, Tinderbox will say, okay, yeah, you do actually want a list. And so there we go. And if we, if we pull this back up and show that again, and I go like this, Michael, I, I'm not back. certain, but I think yeah. Mark may have stepped away for part of your. Oh, no, he's right there. He no, just came I, back. I'm back. I, I believe that I, I believe that you've caught a really uh, small corner case between Tinderbox quick lists and the um, markdown parser. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I mean, and so I it, believe it, it, Markdown treats a bullet at the beginning of a paragraph as a request, uh, as being the same as a uh, greater than sign at the beginning of the paragraph. It, it, it does. And if there's a space in there too, it will treat that space. So I think uh, that's, that's really cool. So we, we, know, we don't need to harbor on that one. That will be a fairly straightforward fix, I suspect. So we can, we can look at that. So that's another way of doing bullets in Tinderbox. Perfectly fine, great way of doing that. Now, which actually Mr. Bernstein brings up a really good point, which is three, um, ruler, not rule, uh, is markdown, All right? So another way to craft and do bullets in Tinderbox is using Markdown. And Markdown is basically a form of style of, of uh, you know, HTML shorthand. And so if I go ahead like this and I change these formatted bullets to asterisks. And this is a great example of putting structure into content. And for me, as I'm writing, it's helping me see these as bullets. And that's a really valuable thing for my mindset. And as I'm thinking, so that's perfectly fine to be embedding structure into content in that way. And if we hit preview, Tinderbox, you know, because of the markdown parser, which Mark just brought up, Tinderbox uses both the language of HTML or language of RTF, which is the, is the bulleted list here, the language of HTML, which are a markdown, which is uh, using asterisks like that. And I get the same thing, great, pure, outputted content. Now, the fourth way to do it, and actually I might wanna do it just for the sake of uh, consistency here. We'll call this one example three, PBX with HTML. And this is gonna be example four. And it helps us spell it right. Okay, and this one will be markdown. All right. 
So now let's think about how we do a bulleted list uh, in um, using the HTML tags. And if you go to WC3 School uh, and look at uh, that, um, you can learn those things. Uh, and to do bulleted lists with Markdown um, or with HTML, the way you do that is a UL tag says, create me an unordered list. And the, the language or syntax of structure in HTML for it uh, is you, you, you do things in, in, in paired tags. So this is an unordered list. And, and so this says, I'm telling Tinderbox in this context, open up an unordered list. And now I'm saying close an unordered list. And an unordered, an unordered list is bullets. And then what I can go like this, let me re remove these. All right. Okay, now, how do I actually, in the parlance of HTML language, create the bullets? Well, you've got another tag called the Lee tag. And all I need to do is go like this. Okay, and I then paste in each of my items. Now, this is what Bill said he was doing last, uh, um, uh, last week. I believe Bill was saying to get bullets, he was doing this. He was embedding this kind of bulleted structure, this HTML content into his file. And we are getting our potato salad recipe here. Okay, and I ran out of lead tags, so we'll create a few more. It's like I need two more. Whoops. Oh, and I still need one more. And this is the way I, about a year and a half ago, this is the way I was doing it. And so when I talk about needing to, you know, I, when I, you know, one of the way I kind of first learned this was I did it this way. And then about, I'd say 12 months later, I'm like, crap, now I got to go through and unstructure my content in this way. Um, because I found a different way of doing it. I don't want to say better. I just found a different way of doing it that was more efficient for me. And so therefore I needed to unwind that structure. But if I had not gone through this process, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am now. So um, this is an important way I, th I thought about doing that. And if I hit preview, you see, I get a bulleted list and I've got perfectly clean HTML. And so if you look at this, you're gonna see, this is the garbage that I get out of that, all having pasted in all of that content from the web. This is using um, the ruler within Tinderbox. This is using, HTML tags within Tinderbox, and this is using Markdown. And you'll see the last three, the output coming out of Tinderbox is exactly the same. It's perfectly clean HTML, which is a beautiful thing. So those are those are kind of the different styles. And now, the, the, now here's what uh, I believe, um, uh, uh, I believe uh, um, Bill was referring to last week. So he said, you know, I needed to, I needed to export, you know, get these bullets out to somebody, one of my colleagues. So if I did this method here, I go here and paste it into my email, it comes out, comes in with all of that formatting. If I did this method here, I can grab it and paste it in my email. Um, some, for some reason, I got it twice. You see, um, it, it, uh, for some reason, it is coming in, into the clipboard twice, which is interesting. I don't know why. And I'm getting some different formatting. Um, if I if I paste this, I get all of the HTML tags. And what um, to get around that, what Bill was saying is he'd had to hit preview, which is something I did a lot. Copy the preview and then paste in the preview. That, that's how he was getting the content out in that way. All of these are perfectly acceptable ways to be managing lists within Tinderbox. Now, here's an interesting thing. HTML uh, lists, uh, Tinderbox with HTML bullet. 
Now, another way to do that, we'll call this 3A, just for sake of cleanliness, and we'll call this one 3B. And the reason why I'm making the distinction in this is there's another kind of list, which is a numbered list. And in um, uh, internet parlance, an unordered tag is a UL, an ordered tag is an OL. And if I do that, I've now got a numbered list. And so again, the really cool thing about this then is with the toggling of just one variable in structure, I'm changing the design and the, and the structure to ordered list versus unordered list. And the way to similarly do that in Markdown is, um, and I, I'm not sure if this demo is going to work out perfectly, but let's see if it does. I can do this. And if I add the Markdown template to this in just a minute, let me see if I can make that work. Three, four, five. Eleven, twelve. All right. So the way to do that in Markdown is you could have a numbered list, and you get your numbered list. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if I apply the Markdown template, and you can build your own Markdown template as well, but my, by me applying this Markdown template to Tinderbox, I'm now saying, "Hey, Tinderbox, this is this 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 note is written in Markdown, so I want you to render it as if it was Markdown." So if I'm not mistaken, Markdown will actually. Oh, okay, and, and in you Markdown, need a period. Uh, yeah, and you need a period because that tells Markdown that I'm I'm giving it a list of numbers. The other thing with Markdown is um, spaces. Everything in Markdown matters, so you need a period. You need spaces in between lines, so it knows it's a bulleted list. And watch what happens. All right, so now I've got a list of items separated by one, two, three, four. In the middle, I've got a number that's out of line, but Markdown's smart enough to renumber it for me. So if you're using, so when you're doing lists, and if you're using Markdown a, as a format and you're numbering your list, you don't actually need to number them in order. Markdown's going to be smart enough. So if I pull in here, I'm like, this one's 18. Um, <laughs> Markdown will renumber it for you. And that's awesome yeah, because, you know, from a content, re and that's per per personally, this is why I write in Markdown because of content repurposing. If I want to repurpose elements of a list from one list to another, I don't have to go back and reform manually reformat the numberings of the list because I know the Markdown engine was going to do it for me. Uh, so I'm looking for my tools to do the work so I can spend the time to focus on my content. Um, and so those are, um, yeah, essentially, how many do we have here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six different ways so far of doing lists uh, in, um, very, in a very simple way within Tinderbox. Now, let me show you this. And this is what I was working on earlier. And this is wickedly cool. So if you go back here, what, what, do, you, what do you see here? So what you see here is I've got a, and you know, let me actually, before I get to, before I get to doing that, um, what, what, let, me, let me talk about what, what do you see here. So the problem I have is when I look at these, and if you, if you, um, you know, look at the whole container, you'll see all the different styles of lists. The challenge I have when I look at these kind of lists, it, you know, and this one's kind of easy. I know what paprika is, but what if I didn't? What if I didn't know what cereal, celery seeds were? As a knowledge manager, um, you know, I actually want to dig deeper into each one of these different bullets. What do they actually mean? What's the text behind them? And unfortunately, when you're working in bullets, uh, and this is where the idea of content and structure come into play. Um, where did my bullets go? Here they are, lists. Um, if I wanted to do that, uh, I'll just do it as a top level example here. I, I would need to do a comma and then add some text. Right. So essentially, I'm. Right. Uh, what I'm essentially now doing is 
I'm putting some, you know, explanatory language to what I mean by this first bullet. But for me, the, the, that's two different types of uh, uh, atomized content. You're essentially merging con two, two, two thought processes there. One, the, the label of the bullet that I ultimately want and the text that gives some explanatory detail about that bullet. And again, hard to unwind or hard to untease if, you, if you've done it this way in the future. So what did I figure out how to do? And I did it this weekend, actually. And it took me the base level template I got built in about 20 minutes. And then I've been screwing around with it for a, a few days. Um, so if I go here and look at this note here, so I've got my five C's of knowledge management. And if, I've, if I have the HTML template, you know, just the out of the can tinderbox HTML template applied, you'll see what, it, you know, it does what exactly what we expect. It... Um, will process the, the individual children and it will give me their headers and I'll, I'll, I'll see the, um, the different content. But what I really want is I want a list and I want to be able to you know, do repeated list generation and, uh, and list development um, you know, on the fly when I'm doing my notes because sometimes when I'm, when I'm, when I'm making my content, I, I want to do that. And when I'm explaining my five C's of knowledge management, you know, I can go ahead and show you my image and, but this image is an image. What I actually want to do is in my book, for example, have a high level summary that gives a list of the children. Um, and so what I really want is a list that says collection, curation, creation, contribution. Now, how would you do that? And, and also you all know me now, now for the last couple of years, spelling's not my thing. So another, re another reason why I'm doing these tools in this way is when I do catch a spelling error, I want Tinderbox to go update them for me everywhere. And so again, keep content in one place and repurpose that content as much as possible where it makes sense. Now you can go, you can, as Mark was say, uh, saying earlier, you can take that a step far, farther. There's a wonderful book that um, Tiago uh, Forte just put out called The Second Brain. Um, and uh, Tom, um, Tom Diaz put me onto this guy. And this is a fantastic book. And what, um, what Tiago had recommended, it was like, you know, you can get too pedantic about it and, say all my content got to be in one place and only in one place. And that, that, that fixed structure creates friction down the line. Sometimes it's good just to be repurposing your content and say multiple tinderbox files, if it makes sense. But in this context, how would I go about generating this list? Well, I probably just need to manually copy each one of these words and put them into another file. Are you guys still with me or I'm, Bruce is frozen. Let me just pause here real quick. Are you guys still with me? Still with you. Okay, good. Because uh, Bruce was frozen, so I um, I was wondering if you were with me. So how did I go about doing this? So I'll show you my the out, output first, and then I'll show you how I did it. And the output is, you know, my problem statement is, hey, Tinderbox, I want you to create a, um, I want you to create a, a list of my children. But I want you to do it in such a way that I actually have um, some control with that, where I can, uh, rather than writing action code each and every time I have to create those list of children, I want to create a template. And if I apply that template to a particular note or a cascading uh, series of notes, um, based on um, me toggling off Booleans in the note, I want you to create a list for me or not. So if I go here and now I apply, the bullet to children template to this note. Now, again, for the purpose of this demo, I, I'm, I'm kind of hard coding this bullet to template list. In my cascading thing, I actually have that being dynamically applied. And you'll see here, I've got some Booleans now uh, in the checklist. And so when I'm telling Tinderbox is, hey, I don't want you to, I'll uh, leave that off. So let's say now I'm gonna say, hey, Tinderbox, yes, bullet the children. And when I do that, Tinderbox creates, pulls in the text, creates the notes, and creates a bullet, a bullet of the list. And you'll also see it's also pulled in the children. So now I can say, by the way, get me a bulleted list, but don't show the children. So now I just get the bulleted list. And then I can say, hey, Tinderbox, um, you know what? I want a numbered list. Now I have a numbered list. And then I can say, hey, Tinderbox, uh, actually, 
include the text along with that list. Now I've got the bulleted list with the text. And this is a great example, in my opinion, of this idea uh, uh, and the power of what content structure appearance does for you is that you can separate the content from the structure from the appearance by using the templating and the CSS functions of, of Tinderbox to be able to, to do this kind of functionality. And this is some, this, and this content here because of the demo is actually the, I, in order to get this image to show up in this demo, I, I embedded the structure of pulling an image into the text. This is not the way I do it in production. Um, but for the purpose of this demo, I did that. That's why that's showing up there. Um, so let me pause there before I go and show you how I did this. Uh, because essentially what we've just done is we've shown the fifth example of doing bulleted lists is use, uh, use, a, use a TBX template. Makes, uh, let me pause there. Anybody have any thoughts, questions, ideas, concerns? All right, um, I don't know if you guys are with me. I'm not getting any feedback. So is it my bad internet connection or is it something else? Michael, I'm I'll give you some feedback. So this is uh, astonishingly similar, same as a uh, HTML-like project I was on 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 1981. 41 years ago. Uh, uh, so, and, and it takes an enormous amount of uh, analysis to tease apart uh, the incoming stuff that's going to be then combined with boilerplate stuff. Yeah. And then publish it, print it. Uh, well, export it, then publish it, print it in a multitude of formats. Yeah. It's basically input process output. And uh, I, the, uh, the, the delight I get out of watching Tinderbox, not that I've been able to use it yet, but seeing you use it this way is how, I mean, the thing I worked with uh, 41 years ago part of the, the templates cost about half cost about five hundred thousand dollars to the client right right and now this what i i forget mark i mean the what's mark what's the cost of tinderbox three hundred dollars exactly i mean it's it, non-existent it, i mean correct. it's trivial mark you're on mute but okay three hundred dollars that's close enough 250 uh, but yeah. So, 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 what was this 1981 project? Was this Scribe? No, this was a, a banking application, a 3,000 year old banking application called uh, Letters of Credit. Uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful story. But to see, I mean, I look at uh, I, I, the challenge to me to watch Michael's presentations is the formatting is different. You know, this carrot and the dollar sign, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's, I, I get all mixed up in the, the current format. But I can see the con, I, I can see where he's going with processing common content. The, the, the analysis challenge is how do you tease out the common content that's collected, I mean, uh, from all over the place? and then jam it into a desired common format. Yep. And that's, that's the thought processes that we need to go through, but let me show you this now. So there's another, so now, now we can start producing lists with action code and I'll show you a really simple one uh, here. Uh, and you can see me constructing it as I go. My list dot each X. And what we want to do is we say, and I'll explain this line by line in just a minute. My string plus equals Lee. So rather than 
if you think about it, rather than constructing the HTML in the list that we did earlier, I'm now going to construct it in um, a, a, a bulleted sense. And then I'm going to say my string plus equals. And now I want to stick the X there. OK, so let me show you what I've just done here. And I'm going to now put the um, no template to this now because I don't want the code. So what I essentially said is, hey, hey, Tinderbox, and I'm doing, you could do this in a template, but I'm doing it in a note right now. So there's an export code there. You know, so going back to David's comment, you know, there's a syntax that Tinderbox provides, action code and export code. And I'm intermixing both in this demonstration right now. Uh, I'm in a note and I want to render that note. And so what I'm telling Tinderbox doing is I'm saying, hey, Tinderbox, Use the action, the export code action to tell Tinderbox that you're about to perform some action code and say, much like those HTML tags we're talking about earlier, tell Tinderbox that you're starting action code, tell Tinderbox your, your, your ending action code. So here's the, here's the start action code, end action code. Everything in between the parentheses is the instructions you're giving Tinderbox. So now if I go back down here, and I'm, so what I'm, what I'm saying is, uh, and we'll, for the sake of demo, we'll go ahead here and we'll go my lists, All right? So essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, Tinderbox, clear out your my string because I don't, don't want to be duplicating stuff that might have been there before. And then I'm going to say, hey, Tinderbox, go ahead and create me a list of the children and collect those children's IDs. Now, a lot of times people might would have taken... Um, I, actually, I'm going to start with name. I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate this in just a minute. Collect, uh, collect the children's names, right? And then I'm saying, Tinderbox, open up my string and put in the UL tag. Then for each item in the, uh, in the, the list, my list, I want you to grab my string, add a Lee tag, add the name, because this is the X. Basically, we're passing each, each name, add the name, and then... Um, uh, and then uh, what we want you to do is then, um, actually, I'm going to do it this way. Let me put the code back here. I'm thinking as I'm thinking as I'm doing, you know, add the name to the list, then close the lead tag. And then once you're done, hey, Tinderbox, I want you to close that bulleted list. So essentially all we're doing here is having Tinderbox automatically build that bulleted list that we were showing you before. And then I'm saying, take my string and display it, display the value of my string. So if I go up here now and produce a note, we'll say note one and give it some children, bullet one, bullet, bullet, bullet two, Bullet three, and for the sake of this demo, I'm just doing it in a in standalone in a note. But um, typically, I wouldn't do that. Um, so essentially, hey Tinderbox, go and build out this list. My string, my, my list, and display it. And I did not get my bulleted list. Why not? Action. Um. Oh because I'm displaying my, my string. Hey, my string equals this, my list equals collection children name, my string equals the UL. Oh, I know why, um, no, my list dot each. So let's, and so th and then, and then again, here's a nice way of then figuring out what did you do wrong? So you can start breaking up pieces of your code and say, let's pull up a stamp first and generate my list. So. There's my bulleted list. So, so I know this piece of code works. And now I'm saying my string equals plus equals the UL tag. So that should have worked. And I'm saying my list dot each X, take my string, add a UL, take that, add a UL. That should work. Then I'm saying my string equals that. And we, again, if we then want to test the whole action code, we can put this into the whole list and you'll see I'm actually getting Why the my are, are they, value. Are they supposed to be all semicolons? Yep. So, but, so watch what I've just done though. I've just right proven my code works. 
right? So I've got a typo here somewhere. So if I go like this, you see, I'm just colon? putting the bullet list. So I was noticing that you have a colon instead of a semicolon, four oh, lines from the bottom. Where, where, where? After the right bracket. Isn't that a colon? Here? Right there. No, above. Here? No. It, in between, where it's just a right bracket. Is that ah, a colon? You're right. There you go. That's why it's not working. Okay. So now if we clear out my list again in the bullet list. And why didn't that work? I know the code works. I guess if we apply the stamp, the code works, but I'm not getting my string. Well, look at what my string is. Yeah, I just did. My string's right there. So if I apply it, the bullets work, but somehow it's not going from the values not. So when I when I'm doing it in this context, uh, no, I applied I applied the stamp again. When I'm doing it in this context. It's not producing this, not triggering this. So I know the stamp works. So what am I doing wrong what, here? What, what do you mean? Well, this should display the bullet list should get created. My string and my list should be populated. And I want to see the values of my string right there. And for some reason, it's I not do triggering. It. Go ahead and do it. Now go back, deselect what? and reselect the note. Ah, no, no. Um, okay. Given that we can spend a few minutes to debug this, but I'm not sure. Oh, I know why. I figured, remember Mark in the back, it, I'm sorry, this is a backstage bug. Uh, remember Mark, the action's not triggering. This is something we've been talking about for a couple of weeks. You know, in, in what there's version something going are you on. Using? The, the latest beta. So there's something going on with the my string. The, this my string function is not I triggering. I believe when that was that addressed. Um, uh, may, maybe I didn't whatever. make it the latest bit. Okay. All right. So let, let, for not for now. So there's something. That I, I think I have a beta version where that I haven't updated my software. Nine point so, three should be right. Could, yeah, but as you can see, this code works, right? And the way I know this code works, and this is a great way to deconstruct what you're doing in your work. In between the action codes, this is just action code. So as I mentioned. I can go ahead and paste this into the into a, a stamp, see that the action code actually works. It's giving exactly what I want. And when I preview it, I'm getting the bulleted list that I want. So something's happening with my with my beta version of the software that's not triggering this action in the context that I'm doing that. Now, how do I prove that? Watch this. If I now go here and I go to outline view all the way down to my templates. And now let me create a T bullet. <clears throat> T bullet children. Simple. And you'll see why I called it simple in just a minute. So I take if I take that exact same code that I put here and go back to that note we did here, and I'm going to remove it out of this text here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to apply that template that we just produced called T bullet children simple. And now it works. Right. So there's clearly I stumbled on my beta version has got a strange bug going on. So that's, that's something going on there. Now to make your, to make your action code in this context clean, what I've just done, here's a beautiful, and again, this is the beautiful thing about it. Now that I know this template works, it will produce this bulleted list for me on the fly. So there's, you know, as I'm getting larger and larger files, like some of my files have 10,000 notes and they're running two or 300 or more uh, or thousand, if you will, um, action codes and edicts and stuff in the background. So I don't really want to leave this text in here because that's creating file bloat and it's creating chaff in the file. So the way to kind of deal with that is you can go down to your template and at the end, remember I said action code is this. That's that's it. And by the way, when I'm writing code, what I'll often do is I'll first start with the open and close tags, and I'm like, okay, now I've got a complete, I've got, I've got a complete pair. Then I'll move it down, and then I'll say, what do I want to do in here? Well, what I want to do is clean out the my string. 
and clean out the my list, right? So essentially what I'm doing, because here's the beautiful thing about it. I only need the rendering of these bullets in the moment that I want to preview them because I'm going to go publish them um, unless I need them somewhere else and then I'll, then I'll want to cache them. But for the purpose of this environment, I really don't want to cache them or create that, that text chaff in my file. So essentially what I'm saying, Tinderbox is saying, hey, Tinderbox, create me a list, populate my string, present that in that into the my string. And then when you're done preview, done doing the export and previewing it, go ahead and delete out those lists. Now watch what happens. I go like that. I get my bulleted list, but when I come back, and I must have spelled my string wrong here. Yep. Spell my string properly. My list has a colon at the end. Yeah, and you'll see here that content's gone. Nope. Oh, yeah. And I got the, you know, Tinderbox is smart enough to help some of your stupid mistakes, but um, you'll get good at catching those along the way. So now what I've basically done is I'm getting my list produced without creating unnecessary chaff in the file. Um, and this is a really great way of, of kind of thinking about how I want to go about doing that. So now let me take it to the next level. We'll call this one simple too. And if you don't want to have to deal with the chat, what I'm calling the chaffing issue at all, what you can do is this. We can get rid of my string and we can say variable string equals V list. And then we can say variable list equals uh, no V uh, V uh, V uh, yeah, string uh, V list string. And we can say variable list equals V list. And so now what we're doing is rather than parking these var values in um, into attributes, because I really don't need them, right? I'm not trying to create content that I'm putting into a, into an attribute that I want to store and use and maintain later. I'm only trying to generate the preview. So what I can do here is I can create the variable list that I just declared and replace my list with V list. And I can create the variable list, list string with my string. And so now I'm using variables as opposed to having to cache those elements here. And then I, because I've done that, I don't need this. And then I create my V list. And so now I've simplified it even further by using variables to pull all of these elements together. So in that regard, I'm not actually caching my attributes in anything. So now if I go look at this list and I apply simple to, I get the same bulleted list without having cached any of those, any of that, those kind of interim steps of production into an attribute. All right, let me pause there. Thoughts, ideas, reactions, questions. It 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 does take quite a mental, quite a lot of mental horsepower to uh, absorb all this stuff. It does. It takes a level of abstraction um, that's that's really important because again, let's take a step back and think about what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm asking Tinderbox to do stuff for me. And once you're done doing it, stick it here. So essentially what we've done now over the last, say, um, you know, hour or so is we've demonstrated now five different ways that one can go about generating a list in, uh, in Tinderbox. And so we'll call this one uh, list example. 5A, uh, 5A1, simple, because that way I can send this file to you guys later and you'll have it. This is 5B, simple two. And the only, di the only difference between these lists is which template I'm, per I'm, uh, I'm applying. And you'll, oh, go ahead. When you're finished with that, can we see the code again? I have a question. Yeah, and let me, actually we had three, now that I remember, we actually had three lists. This is two, 
the first one we did had the code embedded here, but that was the one that wasn't working in my version. So we've, we basically, with action code, we've demonstrated uh, generating lists with the action code embedded in the note, demonstrating the lists with a simple, um, um, uh, you know, a simple template and uh, generating the lists with a simple template that uses variables. Um, so that's the uh, the three methods that we've done. Now, what do you want to see in the code? Okay, on that uh, after action var colon string space v list string. <coughs> so v yeah. so is a, is a personal. So you are naming a variable. Yeah, I mean, what I could do this is I could say that David, Fred, right? Yeah, I could have called that. I could have called that V David. I could have called this anything I want. Likewise, and, and, you know, let me show you. Uh, let me show you something else too. Yeah. So the variables can be any name that you want them to be. Just like that could have been, you know, and, and the Eddie. V is a is. I think you pointed the finger at Mark Bernstein. No, uh, Mark Anderson. Anderson. It's just a convention. It means variable to me. Right. It's a convention. That I mean, this is. I've been telling you this stupid thing for forty years. Humans are terrible at this. Absolutely terrible at this. Um, but anyway, and yeah. It, so, it's, so, it's, so, and, and let me let me emphasize what. Let me kind of reiterate what you mean by the terribleness of it. This could be anything I want it to be, but if I go back to the point of reduction of friction, reducing um, uh, repurpose repurpose repurposability the benefit of conventions and standards like this means that i'm i i start building muscle memory i start building pattern matching it doesn't right. mean that anything's wrong I, they can always be different but by developing consistency and pattern matching the way your workflows work this then allows me to copy and paste my action code between different files this allows me to visually see my brain sees the patterns and so it knows what's going on without actually having to really read it so and that and that's happened over time. The thing that I'm aiming at is it, it uh, how to automate that, how to to use your thinking about something. Uh, you've said it's a variable, it's a data type of string, and then you got to stop your brain and what am I going to call this? And it's yeah, and you want it, and and this is no different than any kind of software. The nouns are completely out of control. The programmer gets to make use whatever nouns he wants. Michael, right. can, can you take a yeah. look at the chat for a second? Paul had his hand up for a moment and he put um, his question in chat. Um, simple question. Where does the action code actually reside in the note text? It doesn't. Um, and so if we go back to, if we go, and, and, and this, is the, this is the beauty of this kind of separation of church and state, if you will, right? If we go back to what we were talking about up here, where was my, um, yeah, so it was this discussion right here. If we go reiterate and discuss this discussion right here, remember, this is the beauty of church and state, content, structure, appearance. If we go back to this example here, you now you're seeing the messiness of one of my files. Um, where's my list demo? Where's the five C's? Here, I buried it in. Uh, where the hell did I put it? All right, I'll, just, I'll, I'll get it from over here. So if we go back here, and um, so in the, in, in the, and think about the different examples. This is an example of content design and structure, or content and structure, because there's no CSS in here right now. Content and structure being embedded. It's all in one note. Not, not, nothing wrong with doing that, but the problem is it, it hurts repur repurposability, of your content, it, it kind of intermixes ideas. Um, so what I, in doing th these examples here are examples of content being separate from structure and the structure is coming from the templates. So if you think about it, I've got a note called, you know, a list of bullets, and then I've got another note called a template. And in Tinderbox language, a template is, provides a special function. And, 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 and remember, Here's the other thing to keep in mind with Tinderbox, and this is one of the beauties of Tinderbox. Every note is the same. Every note is a stem cell. You know, and like a stem cell in biology, it can over time become specialized. 
one of the ways to specialize a note in Tinderbox. So if I just go ahead here and I say, this is a note, right? I'm an average note, I'm a stem cell, I've not been applied a prototype, I'm just generically hanging out in the world and I've been given no specialization. But now I, I go and tweak the attribute called template or the, you know, the attribute calls template, you know, is, is an HTML or is, uh, is template. And if I check that, this now all of, a, all of a sudden has become a template and Tinderbox will treat it as such. And then I can use it. So this checking this box on and off tells Tinderbox that this node is actually a template and I want to use it as a template. So it's a really, really, uh, you, know, it, you know, again, this idea that Tinderbox eats its own dog food. It uses the values of attributes to actually function. And that's where colors and templates and prototyping and all of that. Similarly on that same vein, while I'm just here on this screen, if I can say, you know, hi, Bruce, right? And because I have a convention, all, uh, um, all uh, um, uh, David Eddy, uh, I put P's in front of any prototypes that I create because that tells me that note's a prototype. And if I check that, that note obviously automatically becomes a prototype. And if you'll see here, if I open this up, you'll see here the high Bruce prototype has now become available for me to use. If I uncheck that, it's no longer a prototype. And guess what? High Bruce prototype goes away. So similarly to that, templates can be anywhere in your Tinderbox file. By convention, you stick them under the templ templates folder because it's easier for you to manage them. Similarly, prototypes can be anywhere in your file. By convention, stick them in a prototypes folder because they become easier to manage. Um, that was a, that I was a little bit of a, of an aside, but comment? there we go. Do you mind? No, please. Um, so, um, Mark Bernstein put a comment in there that sounds sort of stylistic that one can go one way or the other where, and, and I think it relates to some of the confusion that was expressed about where does this actually reside? So this is a design element for lack of a better, I mean, I realize you're calling it different terms. But that's how I think of it. If I, if I write a short list and then I want to turn that list into bullets, I can either use your action code or I could possibly put the action code as part of an export template. Am I understanding that right? Right. So again, let's, exactly. So let's take, let's take a step back. The, the general concept here is content, structure, appearance. Structure and appearance make up this concept of design design, the whole collection of it. You don't have presentation without content. So the whole collection of all of this makes content and the tools that you use to make all of this happen, this actually doesn't belong up here. The tools that you use to make all of this happen are you know, action code, export code, um, views. And then um, I would also argue just for the sake of propriety-ness, um, uh, oops. The other thing to, to make your life much better is um, ATB ref, right? You need the Bible that is Mark Anderson to, uh, to make this work. Uh, and th so these are the fundamental building blocks that Tinderbox provides you. As you learn to manage your, 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 your content, you start learning to separate your content from structure and appearance and design. And to going back to um, this example, what I've essentially done here is giving you multiple examples. This is an example of content of the of the export code being in this. You know, basically, this is an example. This is example of Microsoft Word. <laughs> Effectively, you've stuck structure, design, and content all in one place. Right. The beautiful thing about Tinderbox, Tinderbox un un unveils that for you. It basically removes the uh, it removes the curtain from the emperor, and you get to see the emperor naked. Right. So let's say we uh, take this code. And we put this code in an export template. Can we do that? Yeah, like I just did. Well, you saw me do it, right? Uh, five steps ago, I went and copied that ex that same code here. Okay, I'm I'm. All right, and then we have the export template. Okay, so right. Now, and then I added the export template, and I got it. So if so we go we back to our create... simple steps, simple we, one we, is you saying, embed we, the content structure in the thread. People were saying, where does it reside? Can, can you just create a brand new note with three lines of anything? Sure. So let's take a, uh, a brand new note with 
three lines of any type. Yeah, you know, you right. since you're on food, butter, cheese, and flour would work for me. And where do you want me to put it? Right there. Three lines, butter, cheese, and flour. Butter, cheese, flour. Okay. okay. Now we're just going to use the export template, and now it's going to bullet it, right? No. No. All right. You're close. You're really close. But let's explain why. And I'm really glad we're doing this exercise. Let me go here. By the way, the inspector is your friend, too. You'll learn how to use this a lot. Let's grab one of the templates. I've got I've got three notes, butter, cheese, and flour, in a note called a, a note a, a, a brand new note with three lines of anything. Okay, hit preview. Nothing, right? Um, and why is that? Okay, well, two things. One, let's go back to our export template. One, you'll see here. All I've asked, all the template, you know, remember, we've asked the template to produce a bulleted list of children. These aren't children. They're embedded in the note, right? Now, okay. if we want to refine our template, watch this. I can come up here and I can say, you know what? I actually want my text in the templates as well. So now what I'm telling Tinderbox is, Produce your children, a bulleted list of your children, stick in your text, and then add the bulleted list of children. So if I go do that, I've now got butter, cheese, flour. But those aren't bullets because that's the text that's being rendered. Now, in the, uh, in the world of curation, here's the beautiful thing of Tinderbox. Hit Command Option E. I can now explode. I'm going to explode this note. On, um, at the, at the um, uh, paragraph marks, or I could explode the note as line delimiters. Um, while I'm at this, uh, let me sh show you what I'll do here. Yo, know, butter is yummy, is super yummy. And then I can say, cheese. is great and flour is tasty okay now i've added some more elements to this and now what i'm going to do here rather than breaking at paragraph marks what i'm going to do is i'm going to go quickly add in some uh cash marks and now i'm going to hit explode and I'm now going to say, hey, Tinderbox, don't break at the paragraph marks, break at the hash marks and remove the, fir the, remove the first line from the, uh, from the explode and include that as the uh, titles. So now when I do that, I've got butter, cheese, and flour, and I have the description for each one of them. And then I move it out of the explode, and now I've got a bulleted list. And now that I have children in this list, what do you expect is going to happen? I expect them to be bulleted. There's the original text. There's the bulleted list. If I go up here and I actually remove this out of here, there's your bulleted list. All right? And if I put some text back in, my... There you go. Okay, and so just to confirm, and we're doing this as a template this time. Yes. And how do you know the difference? Let me let's explain the difference. It's a template one because I've applied a template to it, right? If you look at the first example, I've actually embedded the action, the export code into the note. So that's not a template. Well, I mean, you always need a template. And in this case. Um, I'm uh, in this case, I'm either applying any template I want, but the template, the ex the export code is actually embedded in the note. And that's how I'm getting the, and then if I go ahead here, do the simple list, you know, that's how, that's how I, uh, that's how I'm kind of getting that process. So it's, um, you know, that's an example of what's happening when you're actually embedding the export code into the list. Okay. So, um, the next example that I want to show you 
is uh, in, our, in our final four minutes, because I can't resist to show you the steroid, you know, this process on steroids. So Mike, think about just, before you, go ahead. just for 10 seconds before you do, I thought Philip made a really important comment. Um, you know, it, it's simple, but but dovetails with everything you've said is that it's really important to think about which template you're going to apply. And so as you are putting the, I guess this is where I get a little bit confused. I mean, the little bit that I do, I tend to follow Mark's um, method. I create little templates and that just, that just makes sense to me. I mean, it's kind of like in Word where you have heading one and title, when you want to change, you can, you know, it's a global change. You're putting the code within, is there an advantage you see to doing that? Uh, actually, there's a massive disadvantage in doing that. Uh, <laughs> in, in that, in that, so this example, and again, I'm just doing it to be thorough in the Did education. You say, you're saying there's a massive disadvantage to putting it Correct. in the no, notice. You never want to do this. You, you, you never want to do this. All right. Because it better, because it, it does exactly what I'm telling you not to do intermix structure with content. The reason why I do this is it's a quick way for me to prototype what I want without mixing around with multiple notes. Um, in some edge cases where I need to have this very nuanced thing that I'm doing with a deeper level template, I need that particular note and that particular file out of 200 to do something very specific. And so then I would do this, right? Um, this, I, so the only time I would personally ever, you know, I started doing this and I tried to do it for everything for like a year. And then I realized that it just was, it was defeating, it was defeating my purpose. You want to use templates as much as possible. But when you start getting to edge cases, then, then it may make sense to do this. But you know, again, I'm giving you the thoroughness of the way one can go about generating bulleted lists in a note. Now we've got two minutes left and let me show you the final example. So if I go back up to my five C's of knowledge management and you'll see here now, I'm generating a bulleted list. Uh, here And again, here's a great example. Because of the demo, I've embedded the image code into the file. And that's why I'm getting this code. Nothing's broken. It's, just, you know, Tinderbox is doing exactly what it has to do. Now, if you look at here, let's say I'm going to uncheck all of these checkboxes. I go here. I get, I get a cascaded note of heading ones and heading twos. Hey, Tinderbox, make them all a bulleted list. Uh, oh, and I got to make it have the right template. Uh, give it the right template. All right. Make Tinderbox, make it have a bulleted list. Hey, Tinderbox, don't show the children. Hey, Tinderbox, let me get rid of that. Um, include the text of the children. Hey, Tinderbox, don't include the text of the children, but make it a numbered list. Hey, Tinderbox, include the text of the text of the children and make it a numbered list. Okay, so essentially what I've done is everything that I've basically taken everything that we've been talking about for the last 90 minutes and then embedded it all into a more comprehensive template. And let me walk you through this. Essentially says, here's an explanation of what I'm doing. And here's an explanation of all of the different custom attributes that you need to be able to run this template. And then I'm going, okay, Tinderbox, open up your action. And I want you to dynamically generate the heading depth of this note, because if this is 15 uh, layers deep into a tinderbox file buried into a container, I don't want the heading depth to become H15. I want it to be heading, de he heading depth one, right? When you're starting the route. Then I'm saying, hey, tinderbox, double check what name you want to use. I use it, I, you, as you all know, I use prefixes. And so I've got a thing called short titles. So I'm like, if you've got a short title, I want you to use it. Otherwise, I want you to use the name. Hey, Tinderbox, double check if you are the root folder. Are you the, the, the top level of this publication or not? That's what this, that's what this is doing here. Um, then I go through and say, and I'm, uh, I'm still tweaking this a little bit, but you know, which, HTML, you know, which HTML template do I want you to default to? Um, you know, you know, are you a, a uh, variable in show title? Yeah, this is all, you know, a way of me determining whether or not this node is the, the top level node or not. Then here I'm calculating the numbering. Um, do I, in my outline, do I want to have numbers on or not? And part of where this came from was um, this, uh, one of my clients yesterday, I've got a 300 page report I'm working on. And they're like, hey, give me the table of contents. 
So I actually created a template that only produced an outline and didn't include the text. Then we've all learned about doing uh, variables in this session. So I said, hey, Tinderbox, go and create a whole bunch of variables for me so I can abstract out of this stuff, including like open and close URLs. Um, and then I said, hey, Tinderbox, now go produce all of those elements that I want you to give me within the template. And then I've got some conditional stuff here. And then I've also got some conditional styling um, that I want in the files. And so at the end of the day, and then once you've, once you've done all those calculations for me, render my template. And so by doing that, I basically embedded all of those examples that we just walked through and all of the potential conditions of those examples into one template. And those conditions then get, um, uh, those conditions will then get triggered by my checking on and off these booleans. Do you want me to have a numbered list or not? Do you want me to have chil uh, your chil children or not? And let me give you one other example. So let's say I'll go here and I'm gonna add the URL. And let's say it is one final, I'll go here and I'll say www.eastgate.com. So let's say this note conditionally has a URL. This is something I actually came up with last night when I was working for a client. Uh, and so I went in and, and, and a great, the great way about the, when you get good at using variables and abstracting what you're looking for, what, um, I started doing this. I can make my export code, the export template itself, simpler and simpler and simpler. Three weeks ago, this was 50 lines of code, this block right here. Now it's what, 10? And I'm doing all of the abstracting up in my action code. And you'll see what I did here last night as I said, open the string of URL, close the string of URL. And then I'm saying, if you if you if this note has a URL, then I want to I want you to wrap. I want you to create an open tag of that uh, HTML tag of that URL's link. I want you to and I want you to create a closing tag of that URL's link. And then I want you to then wrap if the bullet name. I want you to wrap the bullet name with those with those open and closing tags, so I can actually produce a linkable bullet. And so now if I go back up here, now because I've actually placed a value in that URL, when I render this template, collection is now a link. And we can copy that link and go off to and open my browser. And I might have, oh, I've got something, um, I've got a path that I'm not, uh, I've got a path, I just did this this morning, oh, Eastgate. Oh, it's called Eastgate wrong. That's why. Let me go here. Let me, let's just see Yahoo. All right. So like this, like that, create a link. And then I think what's happening is I, I broke something this morning when I was getting ready for this demo. You'll see here embedded in the code. No, it's wrapping. Yeah, it's wrapping yahoo.com. Yeah, that, that should be clickable. And it's not right now. So if I copy that link, pull over my browser, paste that in, somehow I'm getting my bulleted list file name. So I'll figure that out. Right, so but what you can do right. is you can actually, um, I can make that a bulleted list. I, I must have done something wrong with my code. It seems, it. especially because we're out of time, Michael, it seems yeah. like the consensus is that this is brilliant, as you, uh, as you are known to do. And from my perspective, you're taking and applying a level of granularity that allows a person to choose what elements they want. Some of this I could replicate in Word or Google Docs. You know, if I just need the headers, that's pretty easy because there's an outline view that would give me that. But you're doing more than that. And, yeah. and, and also the fact that it's all occurring within Tinderbox and staying within the environment, you know, is, is clearly useful. Um, now, there was yeah, a request I, that that you, if if you would be willing to pop this into the form. Yeah, I will. Um, one other thing I want to show you, and then we we can leave is. Um, can 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 I suggest because we've run over a bit? Yeah, would you be willing to hold that well, till till the next meeting so we don't rush through it? Well, we, we I just I, I need thirty seconds, Bruce. One of the things okay. that you, it's, it's going to address is going to address something that you brought up. 
I just sweep the floor. Um, it's gonna it's gonna address something that you brought up earlier, because as you said I use individual templates, and one of the things that people need to understand is that once you've figured this out, you can actually build cascading templates. And when you build the cascading template, it actually lets you um, go ahead and, uh, oh, I, I might've broken this one. Yeah. Oh. Michael, as I'm looking at this, I'm gonna suggest that we maybe not go over this right now. That, that's fine. But, but the point I was telling you, Bruce, is when you build cascading templates, you can actually have all of this dynamically come together. And that was so very that's, cool. That's my I'd only love point. to be able to learn it in 30 seconds. But I don't no, think... not, it's not a matter of you learning. It's about it, no matter of you being aware of it. So the key point here is if you build a bunch of individual templates, at some point, you'll need to tell Tinderbox how to string those together. Otherwise, you'll be manually having to adjust individual notes for the type of output you want. The key insight is you absolutely can have Tinderbox manually string different templates together so that when you go re publish an entire report, that entire report comes together. That's the only point I wanted to make. We can't we, talk, certainly can't teach that today. Well, what you've done is, I mean, when, once again, I mean, you're you're showing, you know, powers that people um, are finding very useful. There was a request, though, that I received privately, and it caught me a little bit by surprise, Michael. People are wondering if you could go faster. Okay, that was a Wow. <laughs> Never heard that. <laughs> nobody Bruce nobody was attempted that. at sarcasm. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> sarcasm. Got it. Nope. So that that is um, that, uh, basically, and this is like the, uh, the the Buddhist first noble truth training. That is the training of every. That this is this is Tinderbox in, in its entirety. Basically, we've showed everything that you can do in Tinderbox, and then some, and now it's this context. So are we, um, Mr. B, are we on for next Saturday? Uh, we are on for next Saturday. I'm iffy personally, but we're on for next Saturday. And after that, I should be back in the saddle more regularly. Michael, are you here next Saturday? Should be. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, Mark, if you don't mind, if you could send me the copy of this video, I'd love to be able to write, do a write-up against it. Okay. Very All good, right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a great week. Yes. Thank you. Take care. Right. Now, uh, Thank by the way, before much. we shut off, Mark, let's, Bye. Capture the, let's capture the chat. Bye, all.